Welcome to Beyond the Blockchain with Scott Tindall, a discussion of blockchain technology, cryptocurrency, and why it matters to you. Hey folks, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Scott Tindall. This is Beyond the Blockchain, and this is our first live episode. We're really excited to be here on 106.5 and uh, get to talk to all of you. Uh, we hope you'll join us each week, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. You can also join us uh, on the Facebook page, submit some questions through Twitter or the phone line. We hope this is an interactive show, so this should be a lot of fun. And uh, what we're doing here today is we are going to talk about the blockchain. We're going to talk about cryptocurrencies, and we are going to talk about NFTs and everything else that falls in between, and I know that's a lot to cover. So one of the things I want to let you know is if any of these terms and concepts seem a little foreign to you or maybe a little academic, you can go to our website, Beyond the Block Show, Beyond the Blockchain Show.com, Beyond the Blockchain Show.com, where you can see the primer and you can see a lot of your questions and answers in the beginning. Go ahead and get them answered, and you'll also be able to see a full hour of Q&A that we've done to knock out uh, some of the more heady concepts. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to dive right into the show and talk about some crypto headlines. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to be able to do this show, and I'm really excited that Sean Sullivan's here with me in the studio today. And thank you, Sean, for uh, giving me an opportunity to take the show and see if we could educate people and, you know, let them know a little bit more about this technology that we both feel is going to change the world. Yeah. Well, you know, a after having you on the show many times and realizing that an hour was not enough, you know, just talking to me that I said, you know what, we need to do this every week. So I'm glad you're doing the show. And I am one of your consumers of this product. I, I, I'm interested. I know enough to know that I don't know. So I appreciate you doing this. Well, that's part of what we want to do is uh, we want to make everybody what we call cocktail party dangerous. What's that mean? So <laughs> it gives you just enough information that uh, if you get caught, you know, having a conversation with someone, and you feel a little awkward, you've got enough that you can get through that beer or that drink or, mm -hmm. or that juice box, right, to get yeah. on to the next conversation. But you can carry on the conversation. You understand what it means. You, you can give it back and forth. Then if you want to dive deeper, we'll give people plenty of opportunities to do that as well. Yeah, I, I love the idea of the show uh, being beyond the blockchain because when you and I first started talking about this, I, like so many, was focused on cryptocurrency. That was right. the one thing I knew. I, I asked you questions about Bitcoin or Ethereum or Dogecoin or whatever, right? Th those were the things. And, and you opened my eyes and, and pointed out that the cryptocurrency is just one small part of this bigger story. Right. And the it's the fun part, right? It's the sexy part. It's the part that gets us excited. Um, and fundamentally, it's going to change the way that we interact with one another and the way that we do business with one another. But the fun part is all the other things that happen underneath the layers of what's going on with blockchain technology and NFTs and how that's going to transition uh, so many parts of our lives. So, and it's, so it's not just – for most people, they hear something about – they go, well, that, that means Bitcoin. Right. And that, that is that's true. Right. That is true. And, and that's where the blockchain really got started, right? There were these concepts of the blockchain before Bitcoin. But what the blockchain does is it allows people to have interactions with, it, with one another – in a trusted way where they don't need a central authority or intermediary. They don't need anybody's permission. They don't need the bank's permission. And they don't need the government's permission, which I know a lot of our listeners here mm -hmm. you know, are interested in. Right. So what the goal of this show is to talk about how this stuff matters to us in our daily lives. Not just theoretically, but like practically, why do I care? Right? I got this like Good. why yeah, do right. why do I care? If that I'm should not, be if I'm not the end of the day. If if I'm not buying cryptocurrency, which I want to get into in a second, but if I'm not buying it, why do I care? Well, you should still care because no matter what your industry is, I'm pretty sure that we've got a pretty strong uh with a little lead time, we can give you an example on how the blockchain is gonna impact your industry. So, so we're it's not beyond just that. currency, even though the, the digital currency is beyond that. That's right. I mean, to give people an idea, they, they say, when is the blockchain going to be relevant to me? And I would say that, you know, Trade Lens is a blockchain owned by the maritime industry, the, the big stewards of the maritime industry. And about 80% of the world's cargo is currently tracked via that blockchain. So if you order anything from Amazon or anywhere else online, that's blockchain. All that, all that data has already been tracked by the blockchain, all those shipments. Yeah, so this is already impacting your life and is driving down costs. And that's the one thing that blockchain technology will do across the board is we will drive down the cost 
in every industry as you take away the friction. So I mean, you say take away the friction. So how how does that work? How do you how do you lower costs? Like, if I'm buying a widget off of Amazon, right? Right. How do I, how am how so, is it dropping the price for me? Let's um, let's take Amazon as an example, right? So right now, when you buy something through Amazon, um, your purchase has to get verified by your bank uh, mm-hmm. to ensure you have the money. Then the intermediary, whoever their credit card processor is, then their bank along the way. Every step along the way, people take margin, right? They're only yeah. business. The idea with the blockchain is we can remove these intermediaries because we don't need their validation. We don't need their verification because that is contained inside the cryptography of the transaction. So, I mean, it goes directly from the consumer to the company without the... from. So, let's say you and I want to... Let, let's say you want to sell me a rod and reel, which okay. you would never do because no. you want to hold on to all of them. But right. let's say you want to get rid of them one right. day. And you said that'll uh, be my wife when I die. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and you said I'll accept Bitcoin, Scott. You know, mm-hmm. for this. So what would happen is um, you have a wallet address that has a public key and a private key. Think of it as a key is like a really long password. Okay. The public one identifies your lockbox. So if I want to send money to you, I need to know the identity of your lockbox. Okay. Right? This is really long key. Now, if I want to access your lockbox and get your money out, I need your private key. That's what okay. you hold on to. Okay. So there's there's the public one and the private one. So if I want to send you money. Incoming and outgoing. Yeah, essentially. If I want to send you money, I just log on to any of the varied ways that you can send Bitcoin, which we'll have to get into because there's right. a number of them. But I literally um, press the button, go through the transaction. Within 10 minutes, you are actually going to have that. Bitcoin right in your wallet. And the reason okay. it's 10 minutes is that's the speed of the Bitcoin blockchain. Each blockchain works at different speeds. And it depends on, uh, think about it as different business models. We'll get into this, but each blockchain should be considered a different startup, a different business. So they all have different business models, right? And they all but have, they're all using blockchain. They're all using the same technology. That's right. They're all using this technology, which cryptographically takes our transactions and stacks them together. And what happens is it makes an immutable chain because when we lock in the transactions, the only way we can change those transactions is within that block. Once that block is uh, consolidated and transacted, it gets locked away. The next block gets attached to it. Okay. And there's no way to change the transactions. So we have a perfectly uh, clear, transparent transaction ledger. So we don't need all that central authority in between. Okay, because we have the assurance that the deal is good because of the blockchain. That's right. So the flip side, I'm buying something from you. Right. You know, so how does that work, the private key? So it's the same way. So if you wanted to buy something from me, we would just do the same thing. You would have your own key. You would log into your account using your key. Okay. Once you have access to your account, you don't need my private key. You need your own. So we have this phrase that says, not your keys, not your coin. What that really means is if you have your crypto on an exchange somewhere, you're trusting that exchange to hold your money, right? Okay. It's not in your lockbox anymore. Like an escrow? Uh, no. Think of it as literally like a digital lockbox, like this transparent lockbox that lives in the internet. Okay. And you have one, right? Every wallet has a specific address mm-hmm. associated to that. And most of the time, the way we move money is through QR codes. So I can scan your QR code, Mm -hmm. and it immediately gives me your wallet address, and I just put in the amount of money I want to send, and within 10 minutes you have it, if I'm sending you Bitcoin. And and so I sent you that money out of this with the private key out of that transparent lockbox, but you can't get any more. That's correct. I can only get what you send me. Okay. So, I I mean, you can't go back in and get... No, I mean, because you had to use your key to send it to me, right? right. All I did was scan your QR code. So that key's associated with the amount of money... That I'm sending you. That's right. Your private key. No, well, your private key is is your permission to send money out of that lockbox. Okay. Right? So what I do it, with your public key, that'd be like your QR code. I want to scan that to know what your wallet address is. And how much money I'm giving you. and how, Or how much I'm sending you. Yes. So I'm going to scan to send you money. So at that point, it, it is just that amount of money. It's 15, like bu- it's 15 it, bucks and here's my code and, and you can't go back. In. It's yeah, a one-time about, deal. Think about Venmo. Right. Okay. Yeah. Except the difference here is if you have a credit card transaction and you want to charge back, there's no chargebacks in crypto. Once the money's gone, it's gone. Right. Then we'll get into that scams and, and things that can happen. There there is no FDIC. 
Right. There is no uh, get out of jail free card. Like if you send money to the wrong place, you know, that's going to be it. Now that's okay. Cause we got plenty of time to talk about that and uh, we'll get to some headlines and, you know, when we come back from the break, we're going to get into the state of the crypto market and what it means for us today. I know we all want to know, how do we make money today? Should we be investing now? Should you be investing now? What about staking or mining? What do those terms mean? All of that and a lot more coming up next on Beyond the Blockchain. Welcome back to Beyond the Blockchain with Scott Tindall. Welcome back, folks. We're uh, happy to have you here um, on the first episode of Beyond the Blockchain. And today we're talking all about the blockchain, cryptocurrency, NFTs, everything you can imagine. And we'll be doing this every Wednesday going forward, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And if you missed the first part of the show, you'll be able to catch it uh, in its entirety on the podcast. You can go to 106.5 FM Talk to the website and catch the full episode and all episodes as well as the great show's on this channel as well. So we're here talking about the blockchain, cryptocurrency, and today we really need to talk about the state of the market, right? Because a lot of people ask and they want to know, you know, what is the crypto market like? Is it compared to the stock market? Is it similar? Is it different? And the answer is both, right? It is both similar and different. And one of the big things that makes it different is that the crypto market never closes. Okay, it's 24-7, 365. There's no Friday afternoon, shut it down, and you don't have to worry about you know what's going to happen over the weekend. So that is one big difference. The other big difference is there is no central authority to shut it down. If uh, uh, There's no halting the stock, right, as we've seen with some of the um, kind of the stocks we saw with GameStop and uh, now even with Bed Bath & Beyond today. So that's been pretty interesting. But just like the regular market, we are in a bear market here with crypto, and it follows everything you would imagine from the global concerns, uh, from the supply chain to the war in Ukraine to everything else that affects our industries in our normal jobs. But there's one big difference in what's going on in the crypto market right now, and it has a lot to do with this big crash we just had. We had a pretty big crash, and it wiped out a lot of companies, and uh, people ask me, is you know, what does that mean? I say it's now a pretty good time to get into crypto because this wiped out a lot of the garbage. We we pulled a lot of the the projects that weren't really sufficient. We went ahead and pulled them out of the market, and that's going to be beneficial for everyone else as they start to learn and they can learn these these projects without some of the the garbage in the middle. You know, I've told people before, and Sean, we've talked about this. As somebody says, you know, what do you think about the validity of most crypto projects. Well, before I was doing this full time, I thought 99% of crypto projects were garbage. Now I know 99% of the projects are garbage. But with over 1,700 projects out there, that still leaves us, uh, you know, hundreds right. that, that are still good projects that need to be evaluated. Okay. I got a question, though. You're talking about a bear market. We understand that from equities. Uh, you know, somebody like me will look and go, okay, is it a buying opportunity? And I'm specifically talking about Bitcoin, even though there are other cryptocurrencies. You know, I mean, we get trapped in this, you know, when it went to a, a thousand right. for Bitcoin, I thought it was overpriced. Right. When it went to two and three and, you know, oh, I'm not getting it now. Trying to establish what the real value of a cryptocurrency is for somebody who's an outsider like me is hard. My typical answer is to zoom out. I can't give you the uh, the answer on what the true value is today versus next week versus last month. What I will say is if we zoom out long enough and we look at a two, three, five, ten year horizon, there's no question which direction the trends are moving. There's no question which direction the chart is going to go. Now, if you're in it for a short trade or a flip and you know we can talk about a lot of those things later, that's different. But if we're just talking about is it undervalued, it depends on when are you trying to liquidate it. Are you trying to liquidate it tomorrow? I can't tell you. If you want to liquidate it five years from now, I'd say it's pretty undervalued. Okay. It, it, does it track with anything else? You know, as we talk about this fall, does cryptocurrency in general, not even specifically Bitcoin, track any other equity or any? Is it related to fiat currency and how it trends? You know, that's a good question, and a lot of the answer is we don't have that much data on it yet. 
right? A lot of these currencies are so new. Now, what I will tell you is that most of the altcoins, being anything other than Bitcoin, okay. track Bitcoin. As Bitcoin okay. rises, they'll rise with it, right? As Bitcoin uh, recesses, they'll come down with it. And there are maps out there that, that track which coins move with one another. And a lot of that is based on their similarities of the coin, the similarities of the utilities, which blockchain they're on. We talked about there's different types of blockchains. Mm -hmm. There's different startups. So it depends on which vertical they sit in. So if you wanted to think about it like a traditional market, we might say, oh, well, this blockchain feels like the energy market. That blockchain feels like uh, agriculture. This block does that make sense? As well, you start no, breaking go, go, down, well, I hear what you're what saying. Each but blockchain, help, you know, does differently. Okay, so help people understand that though. Okay, blockchain that's associated with the energy market is this in this vertical. How is it? Is it that that technology is adopted by energy companies versus another technology, blockchain technology for agriculture, or like how? Yes and no. I mean, because each blockchain has its own specific specifications that makes it good at what it does. Right. right now, everyone's looking for the Ethereum killer. They want to figure out what is going to be better than Ethereum. Because right. Ethereum is kind of that The vice president right now, there. right? I mean, That's right. Bitcoin, Bitcoin is like president, the granddaddy, and then, or the president, yeah. and then Ethereum is the vice president. Yeah. And there's all these competing blockchains right now that are looking at the Ethereum framework and saying, how can I do better than that? How can they do better than that? Because the, from an outsider's perspective, that is a... a from a technical look, just mean, to yeah, let you know, from a technical to understand side, why, how you could do better, you know, what makes something a better cryptocurrency? Well, I would say a better blockchain is one that can do it faster, can transact more transactions in batches in smaller amounts of time, and can do it for cheaper amounts of money. Because at the end of the day, most of these blockchains are built around transaction ledgers. How can I transact this form of currency? faster and cheaper. Okay. So it is the efficiency of what I'm hearing. Correct me if I'm wrong. And the, 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 efficiency the balance and security of efficiency and security. Of an individual blockchain idea, how, how it's done. So what you're seeing is some blockchains are being used to support decentralized finance apps, right? Okay. Some are being used for NFTs. Some are being used for gaming. Just like we would use a different operating system or I might put a different type of fuel in a different vehicle. You might put marine fuel in mm -hmm. your boat, but you wouldn't mm -hmm. in your lawnmower. You know, right. it's like it's the same idea. They're trying to mix and match the needs of particular projects with what each of these. So think of blockchain as like a tool. It is a new tool, a new type of technology that can be modified to fit the needs of specific industries. And what we do with that is we add a payment layer over the top. And that's what the cryptocurrencies are. The cryptocurrencies are the payment layer. But, but what I'm hearing, and I may be wrong, is that cryptocurrency, if you just say that, is not monolithic. It's the blockchain that drives cryptocurrency is is different, is modified differently. Blockchain's not monolithic. I mean, because I hear as blockchain. outside, I hear blockchain. I go, okay, well, that's a thing. That's that means X, Y, Z. Blockchain means that we are taking a decentralized method of creating a ledger of transactions, they're immutable. We can't change it. Once these transactions are finalized, we lock that away and we make a screenshot of it and we say, this is the way. So how is it different from one blockchain technology to the other? And this is where we need to bring in some some guests who are like serious coders because I think it gets a little deeper than, you know, I, I feel like I'm a generalist. I'm, I'm kind of like the primary care doctor. Right. You know, well, if we need to talk about how the blockchains operate, that's more of a neurologist. We'll have to bring in a specialist that can really dive deep into that technology. But at the end of the day, the best way to think about it is people are going to choose the real estate that best suits their need and the blockchain is kind of their real estate. It's where they're going to build their business, okay. right? I'm deciding if I want to build a business in Alabama or in Florida, I look at the economic conditions. I look at what makes more sense to me. That's so what people are doing with then. these blockchains. So th there's variance in these blockchains because there's right. variance between Alabama and Florida. And people are choosing where to build their business based on those variances and based on what they believe is the most beneficial blockchain for what they want to accomplish. So there, there's similarities and differences. Is it fair enough to say, like, the blockchain is the engine? I started thinking about this for analogy. 
Uh, you know, internal combustion engines, that's a thing. We all know that. But some run on diesel, some run on gasoline. That's right. Some are for torque, some are for high speed. We're not going to put it... a Chevy big block 427 in a Fiat, right? Okay. That's the same idea. What tool do I need to accomplish? They're all what internal combustion done. engines, but they're tweaked differently. Or they could be a diesel engine, or right. they could be an electric engine, right? An electric engine still gets the vehicle where I need it, even though it's not internal combustion. But it's still an engine. Still an engine. So, still serving so, that purpose. So blockchain is the engine. That's a good way of looking at it, yes. All right. Because uh, uh, as much as I learn from you, I become more and more confused. <laughs> yeah. Just... If it makes you feel better every day, I... Uh, spend almost all my time trying to figure out how we take something very, very complicated and make it a little easier so that both I can understand it, but also so I can help other people understand it as well. All right, we're going to head back into another break here at the bottom of the hour. You're going to get some news. And when we come back, we're going to come to some of your questions and we're going to talk to you, find out what you want to know, see if we can answer the question. If we can't, we're going to find the experts that can Coming up next on Beyond the Blockchain. Welcome back to Beyond the Blockchain with Scott Tindall. All right, folks, welcome back to Beyond the Blockchain. I'm your host, Scott Tindall, and we're here to talk about cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology and what it means to us and why it matters. Because at the end of the day, I mean, that's what we really want to know, right? Why does this matter to me? Why do I care? And so um, in this back half of the show, uh, in the future, we'll have guests on. We'll be talking to CEOs and CTOs and the people that are running these technology companies, these cryptocurrency companies, so that we can learn more about their individual projects and we can uh, decide if that's something that uh, makes sense for us you know, in our lives and how that's going to affect us. But coming into the back half of the show, I really just wanted to – talk to you and get some of your questions and see what's on your mind and we'll do the best we can to answer them. Like I said, if I don't know the exact answer, uh, we'll find an expert that does and we'll follow up in a week or so with right. that answer. Oh, Sean, right. do we have anything? Yeah, uh, for, these so in for the text line, by the way, people can text us at 251-343-0106. 251-343-0106 also works uh, for phone calls here. Uh, first one from Tim, top three projects to pay attention to right now. That's a good question, and I would say this is project, a very – Does that mean – Project basically mean, means a cryptocurrency, okay. yeah. Remember, each cryptocurrency is a startup. Okay. Each one of them is a separate business, and we treat them that way, and we evaluate them that way. And, and that kind of leads me into how we evaluate them, and this kind of comes to why these are my top three projects. Okay, so I mean, right? so this is the way – Is it? can I say, is, are you scoring – Yeah, think about Shark Tank, Okay. right? Yes. When, when someone comes on Shark Tank – You know a little something about that. I, don't, I, know, yeah. I know a little bit about that. I still yeah. didn't get a deal. Yeah. Uh, but I did find out the, the show was on Hulu, and people were letting me know, and, and I kept telling them I still don't get a deal. You don't have to go back through and watch that again. <laughs> you ruined it. Spoiler. Yeah. I know. Spoiler. Sorry. Spoiler alert. Um, so each project is a cryptocurrency. Each cryptocurrency is a project. And so then the way I evaluate them, uh, at least the way I get started, is I, I want to first say, are the founders public? Do we know who they are? Do we know who's behind this business? Number two, have they received an outside investment? And if you go to the Facebook page, we posted a, a graph of – Your Facebook page yeah, again. Is uh, Beyond the Blockchain Show. If you go to Beyond the Blockchain Show on the Facebook page, you'll see a, a chart that was posted. And it has the largest investments from the largest technological companies in the world. And what you'll see is that Alphabet, which we know is the parent company of Google, they lead the way with a $1.6 billion uh, line item of investments into blockchain and Web3 companies. We'll talk about Web3 and what that means later. So that's one and two, and that's how we find out, um, are the founders public? Do we have outside investment? And the third thing I want to look at is, is there utility? Is there a reason this thing exists, or did they just create a crypto uh, to say they had one, right? Is it a solution looking for a problem, or is it an actual solution and do we need crypto for the solution, or could we just have a solution? Yeah, but people will hear that, Scott, and say, but it's just another currency. Like, if I'm stuck and mired in fiat currency, what does the euro solve that the dollar doesn't? What does the dinar solve that the dollar doesn't? What does the peso solve? Right? If I'm stuck, if I'm mired in the old thinking. And that's fine. And, and there's 
The answer is it depends on your level of confidence in that currency. Okay. What we're seeing in emerging markets right now is people have much more trust in decentralized global currency like Bitcoin than they do of the their native currency of their home country, right? right. So, so that's the difference. So as an American sitting here in, in Mobile, we have one perspective on – on what we think is the value of a decentralized, autonomous, per, you know, permissionless system. Mm -hmm. And they have an entirely different concept in emerging markets and in emerging countries, right? What we see right now, especially in Africa, there are more people with crypto accounts than with bank accounts. There are more people with crypto wallets in Africa than with bank accounts. Is that a statement of the validity of the crypto or the lack of confidence in the traditional banking system? Both. I think you answered the question with the with the answer, right? Because the traditional banking system is so flawed, they're looking for new solutions. Okay. This provides a solution for them. We can take lessons from from each. There there is no one size fits all crypto answer to anything. Right? There are going to become solutions that have specific niches and then we will have means of transitioning different cryptos into the the more uh reserve currencies that we okay. decide to use. We don't know which reserve currency is going to end up being primarily dominant. And anybody that tells you they already know the answer, I mean, they must be time traveling, because I don't <laughs> I don't think anybody knows that answer yet. Okay, so analogous here, when you rolled through the things you looked at for uh, a, a new currency, a crypto, uh, to give you faith in it, right. is, it this, is there an analog to saying, okay, I, I trust the dollar because, you know, it, it's backed by this, this country's stable, those kind of things. Is that kind That's of the exact you're analogy. Yeah, you're looking at the fundamentals of the company behind the cryptocurrency and deciding, do I trust this organization? Do I trust the people behind it? Do I trust them with my money or with my time or with my energy or my effort? And that is something that uh, is very personal to different people. There's a term in this industry called maxis, and, and what that is is people that become so enamored with one coin that they think that is just the end-all, be-all to solve all the world's problems. And like a lot of things, anytime we have extremists in any particular vertical, right. you know, that causes you know concern and consternation. And, and a lot of these big conversations come from extremists just like we see in our normal lives. Right. And that you know flows through our, our typical conversations. I think as we go through each week – that our, our listeners will find that the blockchain technology and, and cryptocurrencies are not any different than every other organization or business they've ever been a part of, except in the few unique ways that uh, transcend what we've typically thought about business. But when it comes to the fundamentals, the understanding, the underlying how, to, how do projects work, what does the technology look like, you can get in there and you can dig through the nuts and bolts and you can learn it all for yourself. Okay, so this litmus test you rolled out again. Give it, give it to folks uh, that what you look at when you're something new on the scene or something new to you. How how do you what do you do? What are your three? Yeah, before I waste um, much more brain power at all, I don't have a whole lot to spare, so <laughs> I got to use it wisely. So there's three things I want to look for in a crypto before I really spend any time on it, and that's are the founders public? Do we know who created this business? And so are there some that are not public? There are. There's some that are anonymous. Okay. Right, okay. and and a lot of those come with higher returns, but there's higher risk. So, right, you know, just like in your normal life, everyone has their own risk tolerance, and everyone has to make their own decisions. For me, this fits my risk profile. I want to know that the founders are public. You may be riskier than I am, and you don't care, and that's your decision. You know, I want to see if there's outside investment. I want to see if some VC firm who's taken the time to put their brain power on it has decided it's worth their money. Right. And by, by how much they have put in, it gives you, if you believe in that venture capitalist, you, you have some confidence in their research. It, it should, if you know, you know, a little bit about the different organizations. Okay. Exactly. Right. You know, it's like, um, let's use a, a football as an analogy. Who are your offers? Right. If you're, if you're a high school recruit going to college, we want to know who are your offers. Mm -hmm. You have an offer to Alabama, well, you're probably a pretty good player. Yeah. You know, same thing. Did you get VC money from this group? You're gotcha. probably a pretty gotcha. good prospect. So, so it, it would be incumbent upon somebody interested in this to also study the venture capitalist and know who is the real deal That's and who's right. not. Study their track record. Study their investments. Okay. Who wins, who I loses. I like that. You know, uh, this is all gamification. All this is public information. It's all open source. We can go find this if we look for it. 
So what I tell people is no one can say, it, oh, sorry, I've, I've missed the wave. I, it's too late for me to learn blockchain or cryptocurrency, right? That's, that's just crazy. If this was a baseball season, we're still in spring training. We're not even, a, you know, the first inning of game one yet. I'm glad you said that because there are people, me included, that will say, yeah, I missed it. Yeah, I, I understand the feeling, but that's, we are in spring training and we have not even got to the first inning of game one yet. Okay. So we have got a long season ahead of us. Very you know? good. But that's exciting for a lot of people, right? Um, so anyway, my top three coins or my top three projects are uh, Bitcoin because it's the granddaddy, and I think that's just it's got the safest. Uh, if you if you got a risk profile that's a little more uh, conservative, that's right. probably the best place to be. And I just like the underlying. That's principles. like a blue, like a blue chip, it's like a blue chip. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one is Solana, which is one of these blockchains that we've been talking about. I like the way they're building their engine. I like the engine that they're creating. I think that their engine is going to serve the needs of a lot of people okay. to give you just kind of a short okay. explanation of that, right. right? I think that's going to be uh, – it's kind of like the muscle car. I think they're going to – you know, if you want a muscle car, mm-hmm. this is going to be a good engine for you. Okay. If you're looking to uh, put it around and, you know, take grandma out on Sunday afternoon, maybe not. So maybe Bitcoin's that? Uh, well, there's just so many layer ones, right? Um, Bitcoin, yeah, Bitcoin is the slower one. Yeah. You know, it takes 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, but we can get into all that. And so then Solana is the name Solana, of it. yeah. Solana is the name of that blockchain. And okay. the um, ticker is SOL. And then the last one is Helium. And I will talk about this one nonstop. This is one of I'm personally the most uh, affiliated with, invested with, and uh, putting your money where your mouth is. And Helium is a decentralized wireless network that is trying to connect things to the Internet in ways that we've never been able to do before. What maybe was too expensive, we couldn't afford an LTE card, or you know, uh, we didn't have Wi-Fi range to reach it. And through... This Laura Wan network through Helium, uh, we're able to do that. So we've talked about on the show before, everything from putting sensors on crab traps so we don't lose them to measuring water salinity or air quality or tracking packages, tracking seafood to know, you know, if it's gone above freezing temperature or not. Hey, when you, know, you say pretty that, pretty interesting. And you say that, Scott, for many people, that doesn't even come into their mind when they think of blockchain technology. They, I mean, they, all they think about is the straight asset of the cryptocurrency, not the applications of that technology. And that's what we hope to do with this show is to educate people on this. And, and that's another thing I want to point out. This this is an educational show, right? So this is not financial advice. I'm not your attorney. I'm not your financial advisor. We're just giving information out here, and everybody should do their own research. But we can help them get way far down the street. You know, we, can, we can get them a lot closer. All right, so we're going to go into break, and when we come back... I want to tell you about this segment we've created that I'm kind of excited about. Sean, we talked about it a little bit before called The Vault and uh, how that can be practical for our life. And we'll also talk about uh, what the future of the show is going to look like. Maybe wrap it up with one final question if you've got a you know, sneak a question or two in here. We'll see if we can get those in as well. See you in a minute on uh, Beyond the Blockchain. Welcome back to Beyond the Blockchain with Scott Tindall. Hey folks, welcome back to Beyond the Blockchain. I'm your host, Scott Tindall. I'm excited you're joining us for the first live episode. We're going to do this live every Wednesday night at 7. And you can join us. You can text in at 251-343-0106 if you have any questions. You can also call in on that line. You can also find us on our socials, Beyond the Blockchain Show, on Facebook, Instagram, Beyond the Block Show, on Twitter, because it's just a little show. Uh, It's a short... um, Little window of words they give us there on Twitter, Sean. I, I know you got uh, your features coming up, but can I get one more question in Please. from the text line? Yeah, no, that'd here? be great. I think um, as many questions as we can get in, the better, you know? All right. So Janine asking, how do I not get scammed when dealing with blockchain or cryptocurrency? That is a great question. and Because that's a, that's a thing that goes, our fear of not knowing this, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's a legit fear. And I think it is uh, a viable one and people should pay attention to it, right? Because... It's kind of like the wild, wild west out there right now. There are ways that you can get scammed even if you you didn't realize you were. For example, um, there are exchanges that they were cryptocurrency apps that you think are one app, and it's actually a fraudulent app, and Apple hasn't pulled it out of the app store yet. You could end up downloading the wrong app, putting your money into the wrong place. So you have to be really diligent about paying attention to what you're doing. You're putting your money into something that's not even a— It's not even a bank. 
right? It's not FDIC 90, insured. I mean, right. this is like I'm putting my faith in, you know, Tim Cook, Apple, Steve Jobs, and the, you know, the coders that tell me if this is a valid app or not. But I mean, but but somebody could put something on there that's not a valid app that doesn't even, not even, it's not a good blockchain technology. It's not even a blockchain. It's like, yeah, it's a fraud. It's like a copycat of someone's actual app, right? So you down the wrong, download the wrong app, and then all of a sudden you end up sending your money to maybe something called a honeypot where you can deposit the money, but you can't pull it out. That's one of a <laughs> typical crypto scam, right? So, so how do, I mean, people are going to hear that and go, what the heck? I think that until you're very experienced, you start with things that are rookie level, right? If this is like baseball, this let's start with rookie ball, okay. right? That's okay. Start with single A. Let's, you know, download a wallet, download Coinbase or FTX or So or Coinbase BitWallet. is one I have on my phone. You yeah. like Coinbase? I like Coinbase. Okay. It's, uh, it's, you know, owned by a U.S. company. It's traded here in the U.S., so they have to follow our own securities laws right. and regulations. That's the other thing, right? Um, crypto is worldwide, and there are no boundaries that stop crypto. So the laws of the land apply wherever you're standing, right? Those so are, it's those incumbent are upon us to check where that company's from. Where the, that's right. Okay. Like, a lot of these companies are, are Chinese companies. If that's something that concerned you, then and it, you know you should pay attention to that. So, you know, I like Coinbase. I like uh, BitWallet. They're actually a group out of Houston that just sponsored the Texans. It's the first um, NFL partnership with a crypto company where you could actually use crypto to buy a suite. So group bought a suite of the sex- Texans games using uh, BitWallet in this group. And I'm hopeful we uh, we may get to talk to them later this fall as well. Very cool. Yeah. So how do I not get scammed? The answer is start easy. Don't overdo it. Take your time, do your research, pay attention to what you're downloading, pay attention to every link you click. You're going to get things called seed phrases. These are your passwords. Unlike traditional passwords, you're going to get like a a series of 12 words. You need to write those down. You need to save them somewhere as many places as possible. If you lose lose your password. Right. You and I have talked about this on Midday Mobile before. If you lose them. You're you're done. There's no way to get it back. There is no retrieving the the money out of that wallet, whatever version of crypto it is. So that password is is your lifeline. So when you're doing this, you know if, if you're somebody that likes to, you know, go home and have a cocktail while you're watching, you know, the ball game or The Bachelor, and mm-hmm. you know, order <laughs> order online on Amazon. Right. Make sure you write your your keys down, you know, um, because this is your seed phrase. These are these are your passwords to that wallet. So what I would say is, how do I not get scammed? Take it easy. Use verified, trusted sources. We're going to keep some on our website as well. Um, Coindesk.com is a good website that people can use to look up different businesses. CoinMarketCap is another one, CoinMarketCap.com. These are two very trusted websites that you can go to look and see if a business has been reviewed or or profiled there. Um, But the most important thing is you have to take care of yourself. You have to be responsible for yourself. It's a dangerous world out here. Crypto is a is a dangerous business right now. I don't want to pretend like it's not. Okay. Not because of um any not because of anything more than it's such a new and emerging technology that people just aren't familiar with it yet. The same way that people get scammed on the phone for social security fraud and you know, or or you get a text that says it's the IRS if you don't send us mm-hmm. five thousand dollars, we're sending the sheriff to get you or you know. Right. That happens on phones. The same thing is happening on the internet. Crypto just happens to have a lot more money tied up with the mistake the mistakes are bigger well and, and also these things you laid out we have reason to not be naive right. about them we've been given time we know the irs doesn't call you you know the, these that's kind right. of things but with crypto i don't know the rules that's right and, and that's an important thing of maybe that's what we can do on the show help pe- educate people you know they they know when something doesn't feel right it's like anything else if it seems too good to be true it is no one's giving you your money even no, in crypto the even in crypto old adage, no one's giving you money no one is going to ask for your password. Anybody that asks for your password is, you know, wanting it's it for scam. nefarious reasons. Yeah, right. it's a scam. So the same way you treat your normal life, treat the same thing with crypto. And, uh, you know, have fun with it. It's something that is going to be with us. It's not going anywhere. We might as well get to know, learn, and and do the best we can. I, You know, we talk about, like, you got to live life as it exists, not the way you wish it existed. Mm-hmm. So we're, we can't wish away the blockchain. You can't wish away the Internet or cryptocurrencies. They're not going to be overregulated by governments. We'll talk about how they may be regulated in the future. Um, 
but they're not going anywhere. So they will impact every single person's life, and they already are. Okay, before we uh, wrap up tonight on this inaugural show, uh, you, you talk about all these things with blockchain, all these things with crypto, but it comes down to wanting to put more money, right? Uh, digital money. That's uh, what most people uh, are American interested. dollars in our pockets, right? We, we want to make money. I'm doing this. I'm risking capital because I want to make money, Scott. So when I, I do... Can I sp- how do I spend the digital money? Do I have to go back into fiat currency, or what do I do? The answer, like everything else, is it's a little more complicated than that. <laughs> but uh, the short version is, through these digital exchanges, these wallets, you can move your cryptocurrency from one denomination to another. The same way we used to have to, if we were going overseas, right. you have to go to the bank and change out your cash, right? right. I mean, so there, so there's, there's a ratio, when, if I go from... Uh, Bitcoin to Ethereum, there's a exchange rate. That's right. They're called uh, coupled pairs. Most things trade with Bitcoin. Most things, the pair is how much Bitcoin is this okay. worth, right? Okay. That's the, the holding. But there, you can pair with anything. How many pesos do I get for the dollar? Exactly. Okay. All right. And so we match that. Most people match to Bitcoin. How many HNT do I get per Bitcoin? And so then that's kind of your method of trade. But you can trade in between any of the cryptocurrencies that are um, supported on your exchange. So each exchange has different cryptocurrencies they support, right? Because these are all private businesses working together. Right. Uh, Bitcoin is the only one that's not what we would consider like a private kind of business because it's just invented out of uh, the ethos. And right. we'll, there's a whole other conversation that we'll talk about. I, I do want to hear that. Where it... Bitcoin came from. And, uh, and that's just another wild story that maybe one day we'll... Find is some it details on? Is it really one dude? There's no way. I don't think. Yeah, you know, this whole idea that it's just, just this, yeah. This, I mean, this, so Satoshi, you know, uh, is supposed to be this mythological character. Uh huh. Um, I would just be so surprised if it was one person. I think it's probably a collective of people working together. Um, but uh, there's a lot of people out there doing research. If you want to go down a rabbit hole, man, uh, easier there, to there's find. So much out there. Easier to find him or Bigfoot. Well, you know, I saw the other day that they think that uh, Bigfoot could be real. They fa- I did not they, hear Yeah, that. and we can talk about this on Midday Mobile one day, but okay. uh, they found some DNA details. They think, well, maybe Bigfoot could be real now. I'm not, I'm not what having a this teaser, conversation. Right? I'm not having it with you right now. <laughs> That's true, though. We'll have to talk about that another time. But, uh, you know, how do you spot a scam? If it looks like a scam, smells like a scam, you know, probably a scam. If you're ever questioned about it, don't touch anything until you do some research and talk to other people. But what I really want people to know is you know, don't be scared, right? Don't let the scam scare you away. Just like anything new, go out there, learn new things, embrace it. Creativity is thinking new things, but innovation is actually doing those new things. So it's okay to be innovative and stretch your legs a little bit. If you have questions, Go to the Facebook page, uh, check it out at Beyond the Blockchain Show. You can check us out on Twitter as well and Instagram. And uh, stop by the Facebook pages or stop by the website. Check out the previous episodes. And if you have questions, don't be scared to reach out to me directly on any of my socials as well.